here. Oh, yeah. mm. I know. All right, call before they start real quick. <laughs> Don Coriel, is he going to get the Hall of Fame? Oh, my God, he should, man. Uh -huh. He should. He played for my hero. Yeah, yeah. no, he should, you know, first collegiate and then professionally. Yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, there's, there's a few who should be in the Hall of Fame. It's, uh, the Raiders have a few people who should be in the Hall of Fame. Flores should be in the Hall of Fame, for sure. You are to be doing you know, so there are a number of them. It's interesting how that whole thing goes. When decisions are finally made and votes and all that sort of stuff. Okay, everyone can get started in town. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Sure. We'll do the same thing. Sure. We'll try to, we gotta hopefully make up some time though, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, John and Dave are here, so we should be. Maybe just. I know. Should we just start it? So we'll be as long with this. Yeah. 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 So, my question was basically, what was it like working with Dave Filoni to you know? Is kind of the more you know known in the Star Wars universe, but not as well known in other things. What was what were your reactions to working with Dave Filoni? Well, go ahead, Jimmy. Oh well, so I I didn't really know who Dave Filoni was to this world because I I I was always a, I I can't say really I was a fan. I just enjoyed the movies, the Star Wars movies. But um, I've really learned what a genuine fan is of Star Wars, and that. You guys are your own stars, <laughs> in my opinion. You guys are the stars of um, Star Wars. Because you literally just, from what you guys do, have made things happen. Like, I, I feel like Mandalorian's happened because of you. Um, and so Dave Filoni has been one of your, one of you, one of your biggest um, voices. And so I didn't know that coming in. And so Dave was just like this cool cat on... Uh, on set, he'd come up and he's like, hey, let me tell you how to use, you know, this, and that's what this does, and, I, and then I was like, oh, this is the guy you go to. <laughs> like, I learned that quickly, and so I'd come up with all these annoying questions, and he's like, it's okay, and he would make me laugh, and I was like, gosh, that Dave guy is really cool. Well, it wasn't until, like, halfway through, I'm like, oh my gosh, Dave's a superstar. <laughs> like, Dave's the guy. And then just knowing, I just love that I didn't know him, and then when I got to know him, I was like, dude, this guy is, like, solid. He's so genuine, down to earth, passionate, and um, it's really cool to see everything that's happening in his career now. It is. It's very unique because of his, his genuineness. He's a good guy. Because everyone else is so disingenuous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't get Thank you. you. Don't get the, <laughs> You're talking about me. <laughs> Me. The, the funny thing is, like, he, he's, 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 I think that he's um, very uh, self deprecating in that he's so, um, he has d d developed all of his storytelling within the medium of animation, and incredible animation. And so the newness of live action to him, um, he's, he's, very, he's very humble to it, but he's also extremely open. And so there's no, um, he has no agenda. It's a, such a completely collaborative experience. And it's true, you don't get that that often. You don't, you don't get that kind of, um, you know, first floor, you don't, you, don't that, you don't get that first floor experience, you know, especially with something that is as established as the Star Wars universe. So to have somebody who is, who is um, as as excited about it as 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 you are and as the fans are, and as anyone who really um, wants a good story is it makes it makes for a really really genuine good, unique unique experience. You know, he's such a good guy. And he loves wolves and he likes hockey. He loves hockey. Yeah. And he has a great head of hair, but he won't take off that hat. <laughs> It's so crazy. I just assumed he, he was loves, bald. He loves his cowboy hat. His hat. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he picks his hats based on the project he's working on. Oh, does oh he there you go. You know a lot then. Yeah. You ask us questions. <laughs> my, you know, my experience with Dave was somewhat like Gina's because I, I mean, I didn't know the background players really. You know, in this whole universe very well. I mean, everybody. Everybody knows who George Lucas is. Yeah. Uh, and George is actually a very nice man, a really nice man who's very low key. I mean, it's amazing, you know, when you're around him for any bit of time. He listens a lot. He doesn't say a hell of a lot, but he listens a lot, mm -hmm. clearly. But Dave is very much the same way, you know. However, when you ask Dave a question, boy, Dave can give you an answer 
that really can fulfill beyond what you asked him because he knows the material so well. And, and Gina has used this word a lot about passion. Dave is quietly passionate about this whole thing. You know? And when, I, when I'm, I'm around both he and John and get a chance to kind of hear the conversations and be a fly on the wall with their conversations, I'm telling you, they can spin off into the outer rim <laughs> with their conversations about the Star Wars universe and about the lore and about the mythology and about what George intended and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's, it's like, I just sit there and, and, and the, the other thing about this is, and I mean this sincerely, maybe it's a function of getting older and realizing how little you know, but I've found on this project, I've found that I'm so interested when I go there during the day in what I'm going to learn. That's how big my ego was. And because of this group, how less of it I take to the table. And it's a really, you know, you used the word liberating earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a really liberating experience when you have so many smart, talented, collaborative, good-hearted, caring people around you on a daily basis. And what proves it for me is, one day we were in a meeting and I, I was, I've been in prep stage for the episode that I'm going to do. And I'd asked John a question about story. And we were trying to figure it out. And the thing about John is John will listen to you. And he's got his notepad and he's writing down. And he won't just spew out an answer to get, you know, to shut you off because he's really listening. He's waiting until you finish before he responds. So we go through that meeting and he's writing down stuff. And he goes, okay, let me think about this. You know, I know this and this and this and this, but let me walk away and think about this. And so we come back and we're in a meeting with a group of people there, all, all the craft people and, and creative people involved in post-production, production and pre-viz and all that. And John says to me, uh, say, we don't have to know all the answers. Somebody here will come up with the answers. These are really smart people. I'll be there by the end of the meeting. We had the answer. And the answer was better than anything I had thought I could get to and better than anything John had come up with. And I found that experience to be so consistent time and time and time again. So for me, it's one of the most exciting projects as a result of just that. There is so much that you get a chance to learn. And what you learn a lot about yourself is, let me just listen and see what happens here. Somebody's going to come up with something that's really brilliant. And, and I've said this a million times. Uh, I don't have to be the sharpest tool, you know, in that box. But I can take credit for it when I'm directing. <laughs> 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 you know, thanks a lot for the answer. I'll take credit for it. It's okay. <laughs> so for this uh, season one, you have a diverse slate of directors. Do you guys want to talk about what some of the other directors have brought to you? the series? Um, so I got to work with, um, I, can I, I don't know, okay, I, I definitely all got this, to, all the season one all the season yeah, one yeah. Okay, so I mean, I really loved working with Bryce. No, you're not supposed to. <laughs> beginning Bryce was kind of helping me with the costume and so it's really like you know to take a curvier woman and put her in something that's almost like a football uniform it's like you can lose your femininity real quick and you can use your body in that and you, you know of course you want to you want to love what you're wearing right so from the beginning she was like no 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 <laughs> she was like let's go back there you know this is what we're going to do with the outfit this will help this area this will help and so what could have been originally a box frame ended up being this great, you know, um, hourglass shape, and um, that meant a lot to me because, I, of course, I want to be a Mack truck and be able to mow anybody over. Like, I do that naturally, but I also... Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to, like, I also want to, you know, be who I am, and I want to bring that to her character as well and show um, a strong woman. Um, so that was really key from the beginning of creating her costume and then putting it on every day, like, 
I enjoyed wearing it. I enjoyed putting on that costume so much. Like I can't, I, I can't get enough of it. Um, what was the emphasis on I? I really what loved it. What it did, did anybody else like what putting on their costume? <laughs> well, we also like seeing you in your costume. Oh, too. okay. Thank so you guys you. made the right choices. Thank you. Definitely did. But then, like working with all of the directors has been really cool. I mean, to see Deb Chow, um, like yeah. that is insane. Yeah. Like. She's gonna be doing what she's doing, um, and then you know, Taika. Taika. <laughs> he so is Dave's like, first. Yeah. And Dave. Dave. He's written them alongside uh, John, but it's his yeah. first foray into directing live action. Yeah. And he was fantastic too, you know, because you know you're working with somebody who's first time director, and I mean everybody has a learning curve. And so, if you've been around long enough, you can see the difference in somebody who's really well seasoned, you know? But Dave was, I mean, first of all, John's there, so he can rely on him. But Dave was fantastic. And, and again, you just could learn so much from him, you know? So watching him as a director and watching him as a director who'd been in, in, you know, immersed in animation and telling stories that way, and who's been a part of the Star Wars brand for so long, you know, you just saw him gain confidence daily with what he was doing, but also at the end of the day, the episode turns out really good. So, you know, we're, we're fortunate. We're really fortunate that we have a group of directors, I think, who all brought something really special to the table. And Deborah, in particular, I just thought was pretty amazing because, man, it was huge stuff she was doing. And Taika had his kind of wild sense of humor and playing oh, yeah. wacky music. <laughs> he, he, played, he played day. music during and between the scenes, which like gave it its own fun vibe. And then he would show up in pajamas sometimes. I mean, it was like, crazy. Slippers <laughs> Wait, how about the couch? Yeah, and Who's he had a couch. Couches? Yeah, it's just lives. where like Bryce yes, would sit on like, the lamps. box. I'm just like like Taika would sit like sprawled out on a couch in yeah. pajamas, and so it was yeah. really and it's really fun at the end of each episode. You, you really look forward to kind of unwrapping, oh gosh, who, who did that? Who directed that? And like when you see it, then you can kind of look back to the episode and you're like, oh, I see it. I feel that energy of that person in there, so it's cool. Um, as, how do I say? as far as diversity goes, this is the most diverse cast is within the, um, the star's roles. Yeah. So what's that been like for you? And what do you hope that the people watching take from that? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll chime in on this one because first and foremost, it's so refreshing. You know, I, I, I remarked earlier about the, the, the one scene I remember from the original Star Wars where, you know, in the cantina and the guy yells out, we don't like your kind in here. And I mean, it was every, every different looking creature, person, thing in there and then you yell out at it someone we don't like your kind in here. What kind are you talking about? You know, so the irony of that. And in this world, every kind is walking through this place. And they all have a very, very, they're all an integral part of this world, this universe. And they add so much color, you know. So for me, something as simple as casting background, I want to see a really Diverse. And when I say diverse, I'm not just talking about the color of a person's skin. I want to see height. I want to see somebody who's got an M limb missing. I want to see an albino. I want to see small people. I want to see children. I, I mean, I want to see anything that we have experienced in the world to be in that universe because they're disparate creatures coming from every part of the universe. So why wouldn't they be? Why would it be this kind of homogenized world? That to me isn't Star Wars at all. And that's what I find fascinating and great about it. Sorry guys, we're gonna have to cut it. Jeez, I put a button on that, didn't I? No, no, no. One more question. One more, there you go. Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, so I'm from the Mandel Merck's Caution Club, so I wanted to ask, ask you guys, uh, Pedro, you said it was a super pinch me moment when you put on that helmet. Were you surprised by how complex the costumes were, the Mandalorian armor, and how difficult it is to wear it? I wasn't surprised, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 if, if, you know, nothing that looks that good <laughs> is going to be easy. 
and 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 it is humbling to remember to really respect like the artwork that goes into building this world. You know, we talk about the we talk about the characters and the filmmakers, and and but uh, uh, of course you, you you all know better than anybody the the the, the departments involved in, in, in making the whole the whole piece. I mean, to me, they are the biggest stars, really. Um, the people that work on every single detail of our costumes, of the sets, the special effects, um, the lighting, and, and, and all of it. So that you, you just have to surrender. You have to sur surrender to that and remind your body every hour <laughs> to, you know, different ways of how to cope. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because because there is there is, you know the the, the, the the language of the character is strictly physical at, at this point, and, and and so negotiating you know his story with how you know with with all of the pieces um, is 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 his story essentially, and and that's that's new to me, and um, and, and and it's cool, but it's very challenging. I just kind of, I'm burning calories right now. I'm burning calories. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My spine is crunching. I, I feel My like spine is crunching. Okay. There's only three more. Just, we'll, we'll make it quick. You guys just have to answer quick then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I hope so. It's us. Thank you. Um, I'll try to keep this very brief. Thank you for talking about your costumes because as actors, that's the last piece that's going to ground you into a scene. And we've heard a lot about that. Look forward to seeing how that evolves. With that, sir, let me tell it over to you. As an iconic American actor who's been part of some amazing franchises, how do you feel just personally about, or has anyone in your family talked to you about now you're part of this franchise on a brand new modern platform and a whole new generation of people are going to discover you and they're going to go back and see who you really are. How do you feel about that just as a, as a personal matter being part of this great franchise? Well, <clears throat> I, I, no, I haven't talked to anybody in my family about it, but I'm acutely aware after after almost 50 years of doing this as a professional actor, being paid for the first one. I, yeah, that does cause you to cough. Plus, it's me to cough sometimes too. Um, well timed. Yeah, um, but I'm really acutely aware of it because I've had really good fortune, and at times uh, when things to be tough, they're not really. It's just, you know, it's not the time for the thing you want to do and where you're looking to go with a career. And I was pretty conscious of where I wanted to go. Now, I didn't know how I was going to turn out, but I knew where I wanted to go. And so there was a lot of stuff I wouldn't do because that didn't seem to fit into where I wanted to go. But as this has come along, as in every decade, I've managed to sort of meet up with the right project at the right time. And it's kept me alive, and it's kept me in front of a new audience, and kept me uh, sort of uh, in touch with a new demographic. And so, you know, in the 1970s, when there were kids who all these years later have their own kids, uh, I am uh, creating, in collaboration with these folks and all of our cast and crew and, and, and the creators, a whole nother you know, character that they can say, oh wow, that's that guy, you know? Uh, so being aware of that is number one. But also, there's something in terms of a career, you know, an arc in a career, that early on I realized, you know, was important. And what I wanted to do was have longevity. That to me was the thing, you know? And what can I do to create, ensure, to deliver in terms of longevity and be a Berkeley caster, be a Sidney Poitier, be a, uh, a Dan Durier, be a, an Audie Murphy, be some of those people, you know, uh, and so many others. Uh, so, you know, looking at Harry Belafonte today and when he began, People don't know sometimes how much this man has contributed to the entertainment industry and to our lives. And so to me, that that consciousness of that, you know, is the thing, and I'm really mindful of it all the time. Adds to the fun for you. 
as to what adds to the fun of it. Oh, absolutely. Are you yeah. kidding me? I, I yeah. mean, I've got something new I can learn and something new I can somehow contribute and something new I can uh, appear to be. And, you know, again, keep people entertained and say, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And you share us Can we have more? He yes. shares it with us. He yeah. gives lots well, of good we're all sharing. Well, we wish you guys as long and storied as a, of a career. Well, let's hope there's some more. Yeah. <laughs> some years to come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there will be. Yeah. 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 All right, next question. Uh, speaking of the fun, uh, we saw your video when they were rolling out the toys a few weeks ago. You guys were having a blast. So looking back to April in Chicago, what's it like walking into this big universe with all these crazy fans? It looked like you're having a lot of fun. I mean... We were acting. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still acting, yes. I really yes. hate you as actors. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I kind cool. of came out of the... Uh, I've been, you know, my career has been like this. It feels like, a, like the second you get traction, you get like, you know, it's been all over the place. But I think with this job, um, I feel like I'm finally on the right path. I feel like I'm following my heart. And as soon as I decided to start taking myself more seriously as an actor, this job, like the phone rang 10 minutes later. It's almost that close. How that happened. And, um, and then the reception, I feel like with fans, like I feel like people who are passionate about something, um, if you want to share that with them, then I feel, and you're genuine with people, I feel like that's received. So I might not know everything I need to know about Star Wars in order to, to be on everybody's level, but I'm willing to learn, and I feel like um, you guys are all willing to share, and, and like willing to, it's not that, I feel like you want more people to be a part of this incredible story. You just want to keep the, the bar high, so that when people come into this universe, you It know, is the most welcoming experience. <laughs> it I've really is. It's been you really know, positive. It feels yeah. like being part of the, every, you, every single project that you get involved in, you know, you're becoming a part of the family. This is the, this is the most um, invited into a family I've ever felt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it is an energy. It is an exchange of energy. It hit me like the, you know, the back of a jet in Chicago. Really. Yeah. I mean, that was my first sort of like, walked out visceral there. realization. Oh, wow. I don't think we were prepared. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's it. I've experienced that. That's what the Star Wars world is. I've experienced that with other projects, but nothing was like that. Yeah. That was surprising to me. You know? Some energy right there. So it just gave me, I was going to say, it gave me this huge shot of energy because you, then you realize, oh, wait a minute. We really are in this thing, you know? And it helps you do the job. We filmed it. You're going to now. We're in Helps you, it helps you do the job. It, yeah. it, 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 it's a component that you didn't, you, you, especially with Star Wars, because it can be very intimidating, and it is a, a visual effects experience and an art department experience. And so then, as a cast member, and for the, that that kind of support to sort of lift you into it, is is such an essential component, exactly. more so than anything I've ever done. Exactly. Thank you. Last question. Um, with uh, your characters, approaching your characters, was there ever a danger you felt, especially with people like Dave Filoni around, where there's so much history in this universe that maybe you felt like you could get lost in that history as you were putting your character together, or what What was that balance that you struck in, in finding your character, knowing the history that you needed to, and then performing that? Well, I get to get away with all the mystery. It's as much of a mystery to me as it is to the audience. And my justification, which I practically discovered to talking about it today, not really. I'm a very, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a very, I'm a very, I'm a very compared actor. <laughs> but you know, the the the, the, the um, you know that sometimes this is going to sound corny, but sometimes we're very much a mystery to ourselves, our own identity, and 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 and, and the discovery, the, the, the to discover what you're capable of. Um, uh, or, or what your destiny is, or whether you will live for yourself, or whether you will live for others, is very much part of Filoni's and Favreau's, um, you know, uh, vision of this story that is very much built on what George Lucas introduced to to all of us. So, in getting into all of the um, Details of the history. That's that's Dave's. That's their job. It's not ours. And I right? really, yeah. Well, I really liked how something that sounds when you read when I you when you read the script, 
Oh, I'm like, what in the heck does have this mean? How is it going to come out of my mouth yeah. <laughs> in an understanding way? But like, um, what they're really good at, I think John's kind of an emotional genius because he placed me in this character because he wanted me to play this character. And um, he, he is really smart in looking to who somebody is. Not, okay, she plays the badass, but she's also got a vulnerability about her. She's also got this. And he's going to sit there and incorporate it into the story and use these little things where instead of just standing there and being the badass, oh wait, you're kind of the badass, but you're also this. And and um, I just think it was, it's nice that they're this, like they talk on such a genius level, but they're able to communi communicate to me. Like I understand what he was, he says, I understand what things mean after they explain it. And, um, and the door's always open, you know, like, okay, Dave is like an open door. Hey, ask me anything, like anything you need to understand. It's yeah, that kind is. of stuff. They both are. I guess I've got one last thing, which is kind of funny because it relates to this. You know, we all go into this stuff, and you guys are super serious about this, you know, about the world and the universe and, and the lore and the mythology and all that. So I was going through the script that's coming up, and, uh, you know, I mean, I've read, good Lord, I know I've read it at least two dozen times now. But uh, I would have these questions, and finally I got, there was this one thing I kept, forgetting to get addressed. It was just a line that a character says. And finally I got John, I uh, got to John and I said, oh yeah, but you know, there's this one line, because I'd ask several people to ask John and nobody had actually finally gotten an answer. So finally I asked John, so what does it mean when he says this? And I'm thinking, man, this has to relate to some character, something somebody said in Star Wars, here, somebody, John says to me, oh, I just made that up. <laughs> Which is what Dave would say, George would say. Yeah. Oh, wait, but that? it was so perfect because it made sense that this was something special. <laughs> but it wasn't special at all. He just, oh, I just made that up. Yeah. Okay, that's creativity. Yeah. That's what you do. It's all made up, but people buy into it and it becomes this thing. So, so something is holding a blaster. Brilliant, like, brilliant. How, yeah. how did they come brilliant up with holding a blaster like that? And, yeah. and Dave asked George, and then George was like, oh, that's just. It, oh, okay, that works. Go ahead, that's yeah. good. <laughs> that's okay. Cool. So, yes. like, how did it? Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. 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 Thank you.